we go. Oh, well, this might actually work. All right, I've read some comments and this is an interesting challenge. Can you take an ordinary PC fan and make a flyable airplane? First, we're gonna need some PC fans. And before you freak out, I do know about the Delta fans that are extremely powerful and will rip their fingers off. That may be a thing we're gonna get to in this video. But for now, I'm gonna take the humble PC fan that we all know and love and have our own PCs and build an airplane out of this. It's gonna be a little bit of a challenge. These are weak, like really weak sauce. They can barely even move themselves. I also got a deluxe option. We got this AMD Ryzen 5000 series 5600 X. Inside the box, you will find a CPU. We don't really need that. Now this is what I spent my money on. It looks cool, look. I actually have no idea what these are going to do. Let's put them all on the scale and fire them up to 12 volts and see which one produces the most thrust. Oh wait, critical thought error. It's blowing the air onto the scale itself. So about 13 grams of thrust when this is running full tilt. Oh, I also should mention, this is a 22.2 volt lithium polymer battery. This fan is designed for 12 volts. You can do the math. We're, we basically overclocked this fan. Uh, I have a more appropriate 11.1 volt lithium polymer battery. So we're going to try this now. Let's see how much thrust we actually get. This is what your computer would probably actually be doing. About five grams of thrust. This is the Purex technology fan that I got at the discount bin at Micro Center a long time ago. That fan weighs 74 grams. Let's try the King Win $3 special. So the King Win is 59 grams. It doesn't even really show any grams. Six grams on a 22 volt battery. It could be operator error here. All right, we have the AMD fan on the scale and it is currently registering four grams. Let's try the big battery. Uh oh, I heard a pop. I think it just blew up. Oh, it smells. We have these two fans. I think the Pure X is the most promising sort of with the most thrust, but the King Win is the lighter of the two. Now, there are a lot of options we could do when it comes to building an airplane. Airplanes are very, very diverse as far as emissions goes and power supplies that flies them and you know, like airspeeds and all that. So I'm going to point towards my history in the past. Enter the mousetrap airplane. Oh! So the mousetrap plane was a very efficient design because it's designed to fly very slowly, which these fans put out a very minuscule amount of thrust, so it's gonna be optimal to use something like that. And they also are extremely lightweight, therefore reducing the overall weight of the airplane, meaning the PC fan has to carry less weight. So we're gonna try to build one of those super lightweight, super skeletalized, ultralight stick tissue paper airplanes and then mount the fan to it. This is so freaking fragile. It's like if you were trying to like, I don't know, like mm, short the stock market and you only held, you know, so many shares, but then everyone came together, bought GME, got all their shares together and held the positions. And then we short squeezed our way into the air. This is what it would totally look like. This is not financial advice, by the way. Yeah, it's nice and stiff. I can do this and it's not breaking in a million pieces. I really still have my doubts about the little PC fans. We may have to go to even to a, oh, something broke. But I am going to try with all my might to make it work with the crappy little PC fans we tested earlier. Where's that camera thing? Look at this. Oh, <laughs> it flies with it. It's super floaty. It's kind of heavy. I'm really not sure how this is gonna work. Let's just throw it around, have some fun with the gliding first. Then we'll wire up the uh, PC fan so you can actually get some power flight. I don't know, man. I mean, it definitely like floats slowly, but I don't know if that fan's got enough oomph to really, you know, keep this thing aloft. <laughs> it's so cool. Okay, we're gonna measure the weight of the aeroplane. Mm, looks to be about balanced. The plane is 60 grams. The plane weighs as much as the lightest PC fan that we have. It's kind of incredible when you consider the size of the airframe to power plant. I feel better. It feels like it's really heavy, but that's because it's got such a large like mass and when I move it around, I'm feeling the airflow, you know, interact with the airplane and you know, my hand, it feels way heavier than it actually is. 60 grams for an airplane this size is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> So 
So I made this cool battery tray, which is basically a piece of balsa wood with batteries literally stuck to it. So I have these little one cell batteries. These are 220 milliamp batteries. I basically wired them in series to make a three cell lithium dollar battery. I'm gonna take the fan and tape it on there because I literally have no better options right now. Hey Sam, hold this, will you? All right. So we have the fan, which is just, yeah, taped onto the front of it. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Oh, you can't hear it. You can only hear fish tank because at least these PC fans are whisper quiet. All right, Sam Cash, I'm gonna fly it towards you. Oh no, oh no, oh no. It's totally fine. Okay, let's add more batteries. <laughs> Now I have double the LiPos. So instead I have a three cell LiPo, we are now up to a six cell LiPo, because I figured rather than going three, four, five, six, let's just go to six, because six is the maximum we can get with this ordinary PC fan. So you plug it in. Well, you can hear it now, you hear that? It's a lot louder. All right, let's see if it works. I can feel a little bit of a breeze. Yeah, it's a lose-lose, it's not really gaining altitude. Yeah, it's descending. So I think the verdict might be out on the ordinary PC fan without modifications. I think the case and all this stuff is just a little bit too heavy, but I have, do have one more trick we can try with the PC fan, but it does involve modifying the case some. All right, we got our super skeletalized fan. I've only managed to save like four or five grams by chopping all that plastic off, so it's really not that much of a benefit. I'm gonna try this anyways before we take even more drastic measures. Whoa, that's way better. It's, it's definitely, the sink rate is definitely a lot lower now. I'm not quite feeling it, it's better though. Time to take more extreme measures. We're gonna go from 54 grams to astounding, 33 grams. Now I'm gonna glue this to the front of the airplane. I'm pretty sure we can fly off the stock, fan, motor, combo, propeller thing, just without the case. So we have the caseless fan. It's now heavily modified, but it's still a normal PC fan. Because the PC fan is so much lighter now, we have to move the batteries forward to compensate for that lightness. All right, let's see if this can fly. My airframe design is pretty archaic at best. It's not the most efficient. So I'd still say at, at most, this is very plausible that you can get something to fly like this if you're a better aero engineer than I am. This is probably like 70% of the equation. The other 30% of the equation involves a lot of math and extreme calculations and super precise building, all of which I'm not really capable of. Uh, let's try cheating by adding more batteries. We now have seven cells of power. Now we're running into dangerous territory because I'm not sure how much these little PC fans can take as far as, you know, ramping up the voltage. But this is going to be the first seven cell test, so it could fire up or it could explode. Ooh, it works. It's close, man. It's really close. But I'm starting to already kind of break my slight rule going into this because the goal was non-modified PC fan, can it fly? I've already heavily modified this PC fan. I've already like doubled the voltage, but I do have one other option. Earlier today, I went into town and I've met so many fans. Earlier what we were using was a basic normal PC fan, usually designed to be pretty quiet because people are really picky about their builds. As far as gaming PCs go, they like really quiet stuff. People don't really care in the server world. So you got these really small fans. They consume more amps. They're very, very, very noisy, but they produce a lot of thrust or sort of, you know, uh, cubic feet per minute as far as airflow goes. Where it's not so, you know, critical whether they're noisy or not. Some of these are kind of like a hybrid where they're a little noisy, but they're also still efficient. So we're gonna do a little bit of testing to determine which one we're gonna use in an airplane. Now I could do thrust per gram, but the problem is our scale kind of sucks for measuring thrust and it takes a little bit of time to put these all on the scale. So I thought of another clever way to figure out how much power we're producing. We're actually gonna calculate for watts. So what I'm gonna do is take the voltage times the amps 
and then that's going to give me the wattage each fans produce. And I'm going to do watts per gram, so I'm just going to divide that amongst the weight of the fan. So that'll tell me how many watts per gram the fan can produce. There's obviously going to be differences like as far as blade design goes and all that, but I think that's going to get us a pretty good accurate model of which fan is going to do the better job of flying the airplane. Alright class, we've done some quick maths. Our original King Wind benchmark fan is 30 grams and produces 2.88 watts. That's about 0.96 watts per gram. It's pretty trash. We don't want that one. In red we have the 12 volt fans and in purple we have the 24 volt fans. I don't like 24 volts. It's more batteries we have to carry and my batteries are already kind of large. I could get smaller batteries but I don't have that right now. So we got to stick with what we got. So all of these purple numbers, we're getting rid of those fans. Don't want that one. I also don't want that one. This one, yeah, yeah, you're 24 volts. Get out of here. So this is 0.105 watts per gram. It's pretty good. I'm, I'm looking at this fan right now. This San Ace 40, this thing's even more fire. Look at that. 0.257 watts per gram. That's really good. The top motor fan is sucks because that's worse than the King Wind. So I really don't want you. You're out of the equation. Our last two fans, we have the San Ace 80 and the Delta fan. This thing is a monster. It's about the same as this little guy right here and I feel like this is gonna do really well. Unfortunately, that 90 grams is just way too heavy for our application. So I don't want any more weight because weight is the enemy. We're already really heavy in this plane. The faster you make it go, the worse it's gonna be. So we're getting rid of this too. So that leaves us with the Alina fan and the San Ace 40. Now, this is a really weird fan because I've never seen anything like this, but this is a push and pull fan. Two stages, it actually clicks together. So we're gonna try this one last because I've already fired this up, just this part, and it moves a lot of air. All right, can you hear it? The Elina fan, it's definitely a lot more vocal than the other fan. And it's running on stock voltage, which is pretty realistic. Let's try it. Uh... So I think what we're gonna have to do is go to the other fan because the other fan is like double the amount of power. I'm running out of tricks in my bag. We have the Sandy Sporty, but we only have half the fan because uh, Two fans might be real ridiculous. Plus I play with one of these, like listen to this thing. It's like a little jet engine. <laughs> it's like a mini jet engine. It's so powerful. I'm pretty sure it's just gonna fly. I'm gonna have to put the fan up a little bit higher. Cause what, right now what the fan is doing is just, it's pitching the airplane up so it's stalling and then it comes down. The fan is now top mounted so we've kind of got the thrust angles Adjusted. Spool the mini jet engine. Oh. Alright, I need to fix that. Alright, it's still just barely enough for us. Time to add the other stage on. Alright, Sam, can you catch this? If I can get it going in a straight line. That's probably as close as we're gonna get right now. I am going to get two of the same fans because the problem is I think one fan is better than the other because like I said, these are designed to be stacked. One sucks, one blows. <laughs> this is not the most optimum thing. So I'm gonna get two, two blowy fans and put them next to each other because I'm pretty sure they'll be more matched. And we'll probably try to add another LiPo to get a little bit of extra juice to boost. Take it outside and let it go away. The cold temperature caused the plastic to shrink a little bit more, and then it exploded. Man, the whole thing is actually getting real scrunchy. I'm not sure if I get to fly this or not. Moment of truth, I don't think we're gonna get much with this because it's cold and ultra fragile. Whoa, look at that. With the wings coming out down, what do you do that? All right, let's try again. Whew, it's cold. Ooh. 
Whoops. <laughs> we're done! All right. I have some better ideas and better thoughts of what we're gonna do now. Ready to try airplane number two. This plane has no throttle control. So I just gotta plug it in and then throw it. And then I'll, I'm gonna steer. Ready? Haha, <laughs> look at it, it flies. It's very anemic, obviously. We're not getting massive rocket thrust, but we are able to fly. <laughs> Hey, is that your power supply? No, it's just my airplane flying through the air with a PC fan on it. Server fan, I should say, to be more correct. Oh no. <laughs> oh my wing! Hang on, I gotta get that. I don't wanna go around. So it totally actually worked. But before we get into the science of why this specific airplane worked and the other one didn't work, I wanna show you guys something cool with PC fans. Now if you didn't know, PC fans can generate an infinite amount of power if you have the right stuff. This is an ordinary PC fan. I have some south and north polarized magnets, but I also have a special westerly polarized magnet. I've glued some metal onto it and metal is actually attracted to magnets. So we're gonna go ahead and finish this up. So as you can see, all of our stuff is on it. You can see it moving just a little bit, but don't, don't let it spin yet. For the voltage device, we have a little LED because it's low current. It doesn't take much power to turn that. As you can see, also, there's no batteries, no trickery going on here. And uh, let's go and test it. All right, here we go. All right, uh, it just, just give it a second. It'll start going. Oh my god, look, at it. it's totally working. It's going now. As you can see, yep, yeah, it's working. It vibrates a little bit, as you can kind of notice. It's free, clean energy that's perpetual and violates the laws of thermodynamics. Isn't that amazing? I said, isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? That was all foolery. It's not real. But you know what is real wireless technology? These Raycon wireless earbuds. Huge thanks to Raycon for making this video possible. If you're looking for a premium wireless audio experience, look no further. Raycon has been disrupting the market by designing wireless earbuds with amazing performance and a large variety of colors. Performance is spectacular as well. On a single charge, you can get up to six hours of your favorite podcast or songs, all while enjoying extra bass. Pairing is also seamless and simple, as well as the fit, which gives you a nice, comfortable, noise-isolating fit. These earbuds are my great go-to solution while working around the shop. I work with a lot of power tools, which are very dangerous. Having cordless earbuds is amazing. It's way safe. So when power tooling, I like to have some sound to go along with the noise I'm making. Raycon is also sure you'll love these things, that they offer a 45 day free return policy. Without sponsors like Raycon, these videos would be a lot harder to make and take a lot longer. Longer than they already take. <laughs> So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description box below or go to buyraycon.com slash petersheeple and save up to 15% off your first headphone purchase today. Uh, oh yeah, where were we? Um, yeah, the PC fan airplane. Why do we go from this plane to this plane? Well, the reason why is the original task or challenge was to make in a PC fan fly. This is your normal, boring, semi-high CFM, low noise, PC fan. What that basically meant was I had to design an airframe to kind of fly around this. So the airframe I designed was a huge plane designed to create lift at low air speeds. Now the problem was when we started experimenting with more of these PC fans that are a little bit more high velocity is well, they don't really move a large amount of air. I mean, they kind of do, but they do it with, you know, 
a lot of noise and a lot of thrust coming out of a small hole. Now we could potentially just go faster with the airframe by introducing more of these fans, which we did. Now the problem with that though is the faster you go, the more drag you create. The more drag you create, that means you need to add more fans to overpower that drag. When you do that, you weigh down the airplane even more. That means you need to fly faster to create the amount of lift. It's a vicious self-fulfilling cycle that honestly ends up with the plane burning to the ground. It didn't actually burn to the ground. I set it on fire because I had no use for it. Now, through all the testing though, I still found the San Ace 40 was the optimum fan to go to. These tiny server power supply fans still have to move a large CFM to cool a power supply unit or a server. However, usually server closets and stuff are away from you so they don't bother your gaming experience. So that means they can make all the noise they want to produce the thrust, or not really thrust, but more likely move the CFMs through your electronics to keep them cool. The benefit of that is there's, there's an extreme column of air that comes out of the back of this thing, which is basically thrust in our case. Basically that means that this plane is going to fly faster than our earlier airplane. And when you fly faster, you still need to be moving a certain amount of air to create thrust because the fan has to be moving more air than the speed that the plane is flying at to generally fly. So ultimately, it worked. It was still anemic and I wouldn't really want to use these things on any significant number of airplanes, but we did get a usable flying airplane. So as far as testing your normal PC fan, I still leave this is sort of plausible because I can't really get to a big indoor facility to really design the most fragile airplane in the world to fly with this. However, going outside and using a server power supply PC fan, totally doable. We completely can totally do this. So that's it. That's all I have for you. Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I've at least converted my airplane into a mobile hand warmer. First rule of surviving in the wild is to start a fire by all means necessary, even if it means burning your own aircraft. <laughs>